So I may have seen the future of amateur golf, and it's pretty cool. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Knock Stiff Golf. I'm Kyle, and I'm just a fellow golf addict like you. I just happen to live in Anchorage, Alaska. When I'm not out on the course playing golf, you're going to find me right here talking about it. So I stumbled across this page called Club Junkies Discussions. And this was a while back, and I just thought it was fellow golf addicts just like myself that wanted to talk golf. And and I realized this group was a lot like all the other golf groups. You have a lot of people showing off their swing, just talking golf, talking gear, all the things that we love to discuss. Well, within the last couple weeks, things kind of took an interesting turn. You had one of the main admins of the page, and his name, well, I'll leave names out of it, just for the sake of it. You have the main admin that appears to have started the page, who seems all around to be a pretty good guy, had a lot of people that uh, support him in this. And then there was a, another gentleman who would post things that were maybe considered inappropriate on there for some reason, regardless. So he got banned from the page. Well, there was this big uproar about if he should have been banned or not banned. Regardless, they called each other out and said, hey, let's settle this in a match. And so the deal was that if the admin, who is an assistant pro at a, at a golf course, was to win, he would get $500 from the other player. If the other player that was banned won, he would receive admin rights to the page and be able to basically do with it as he will within some sort of reason. They set this match to take place. They set it for April 10th at a Robert Trent Jones Jr. course called Silver Lakes, and it's in Gadsden, Alabama. They set it for April 10th, so basically the Wednesday Par 3 Tournament of the Masters was going on. Everybody's watching that. Meanwhile, these guys decided to have a match, in my opinion, was far more entertaining. Now I'm going to run through this real quick just because I need to get to the point about why I think this might be the future of amateur golf. These two gentlemen showed up to the course, which there was even questions if either of them would show, and they brought with them some sort of entourage of a couple guys that decided to live stream the whole round of golf. What I thought was awesome was there was such a rawness and purity to the recordings that, you know, weren't always high quality, it was shaky, blah blah blah, all these different things, but you got to see two amateur golfers feel the nerves of what it feels like to be in a higher stress situation. Both had a lot of pride on the line, some of them had money, and other things that they were wanting to win. And so what you saw were people out there with their phones on Facebook Live recording every shot, every move, everything exchanged between the two players. There was people commenting as Facebook Live allows you to do, which was probably part of the most entertaining part of it. A lot of people said that this was way better than the match between Tiger and Phil, and and I have to agree, it was way more entertaining. You had these two guys that have just talked so much smack to each other over the course of a few weeks that it was hard not to choose one of them to cheer for because both of them have their pros and cons to them. What it ended up coming down to was on the 18th hole, there, it, the match is all square. The guy that had been banned had about, it had to be like a 20 foot putt for birdie to win the match. And he hit it and I'm sitting there watching this Facebook live stream on the edge of my seat, probably m- more tense than I have watching a PGA event in a long time. And I watched this take a right to left break and hit the pin and bounce out. I think I probably verbally let out a gasp because I was just so into the match at that. Regardless, they had to go to an extra hole. The assistant pro ran into some bunker trouble, couldn't get it out, and the band gentleman ended up birding the hole, I believe, with a couple nice shots. It was a par five. Drains a five footer or so for birdie, match over. He gets admin rights, and after that, it was quite the the spectacle on that page. You have, I think, tens of thousands of people on this page, and at that given time, the live stream was up to 500 people. There was a lot of people that watched that go down. Needless to say, people were not gentle with either party about the whole thing, calling them out for their handicaps maybe not being accurate, calling them out for being trash players and trash people, even. What I'm saying is that the coolest part about that was is now in this day and age, we all have access to these, we have access to cameras, we have access to everything where an amateur can challenge an amateur, you could do match play, you could do teams, you could do all these things and live stream, record, everything. This isn't new. We've watched golf vloggers do this for a while. I've tried it myself. And as these people found out, it's a lot harder to do 
a professional looking golf vlog like Golf Holics does or like Rick Shields or Peter Finch used to do. To make it look like that and all the cutting and editing that you need to do to make that a polished product takes a lot of work. So I think it opened up a lot of people's eyes, but what you can do is meet somebody from across the world. And if you happen to be in the same location at some point in your lives, whatever it may be, if you cross paths, you could document a match and show it to people live even if you wanted to and take the effort and actually put yourself in pressure situations where you used to never be able to act like you could, you were on TV. You never had that putt to win a major like a lot of pros have that opportunity where they're playing on TV and the pressure's there. And we used to dream about that as kids on the putting green, this putts to win a green jacket at the Masters. Well, with technology the way it's moving, we're able to have a match between two people, stream it to maybe tens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, who knows how big of a following you might have at one point, and they will care just as much about that putt you're gonna make as maybe a, a professional golfer making a putt to win a tournament. I think it's kind of exciting. I think that the way things are moving with technology, you're going to see a lot more amateur activity with documenting golf and showing matches and and people calling each other out to actually maybe do a money match on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or whatever it may be one day. And I think as consumers of golf content, we're all going to win at the end of the day because there's nothing we love to watch more than an underdog win against a undefeated opponent or watch our favorite golfer defeat another golfer. And pretty soon we're going to be able to watch that live or if not recordings of it happening. And as we all know, amateur golf is really exciting because anything can happen. There was always the chance in that match that I watched that there could be a shank, there could be a skull, there could be a chunk into the trees, all sorts of things. And some of that did happen. So that's made it entertaining to me. And I think that's coming around the corner one day and I think we're all gonna enjoy it. I think the best part about this was this match even caught the eye of Riggs from Barstool Sports. The gentleman put up the tweet that showed Riggs reaching out saying, I might be there with a cameraman. It didn't look like he actually was able to make it. I'm sure Barstool or Foreplay, whatever Riggs is doing, was involved with the Masters in some regard, so he wasn't able to make it down. Whatever happened with his schedule, he didn't make it out, but it would have been a good story to share to other golf addicts because this is stuff that we, we love to see. We love to see people challenging each other for money and if we can see video format of that, that makes it even better. So the second part of this video is just something I went out with my buddy, Zach. We went to the indoor driving range because that was the only thing that was open and we decided to have our own little competition. And so now I'm gonna walk you through what happened and, and I hope over the course of the summer, I'll be able to offer a few more challenge matches to people and actually document it and show people playing golf for relatively low stakes, but there's something to be said about watching people play golf. We all love to watch it, whether it is professional or not. It's entertaining to watch people hit a white ball around the course. If you know why, please share with me because I'm not sure I have it nailed down, but let's get to that and see how it goes down. So this is one of my first times doing a voiceover like this, but Zach and I got to the dome. We set up a target 50 yards away to start and we each got three balls to hit at it. So here I am, we, we each got our three shots. So the first one, for some reason, wasn't picking up the spin very good, but put it relatively close. This one was a little closer. Looks like it ran three yards by. It's a 50 yard shot, like I said. Here's my final shot. And that one, I think, rolls the exact same distance. So not great. Here's Zach, so he's gotta beat my three yards, roughly. I put it nine feet-ish away. So his first attempt looks like it goes about 47 yards. Not quite there. Then he puts a little spin on it and gets it to 48, so. And then he puts this one a little short, so. That's Zach going one up on the first competition. Now we go to 75 yards. So again, we're doing three shots at it. This one I thought was pretty good, but then it rolled out again. So for some reason it wasn't picking up the spin very well. Here's my second one. Not good, but not the worst. So and then this third one, ugh, I think I almost shanked it, but 
and then it spun. So, you know, it happens. So Zach just kind of got an easy one. Doesn't really have to put it too close. And his first shot, still got five yards to go. I think this one rolled out. Rolled out to 73, so looks like he wins the 75 yard match right there. And then just to seal the deal again, sticks at 75 yards. So now we go to 100 yards. So at this point, I think I'm using my 54 degree and I take down part of the, the net. But not a bad shot. I hit it exactly the 100 yards. We put that back up with a ladder. Here's my second one. I think it was pretty good too. Yeah, I had I had 100 yards dialed in with the the new Phil Mickelson uh, 54 degree. Third shot, I thought might have a chance to go in. 102. So Zach's got to beat basically right next to the pin. His first shot comes up short. I think he uh, caught that one maybe a little heavy. That one sounded a little bit better, but still comes up short. I don't know what his gapping on his wedges are. I think it might be a f maybe a 56 or something that he was trying to push. So that one was almost the right distance, just a little left. So next we step up to 125. This is the perfect yardage for my new 48 degree AP3 that I got. Uh, it's about a full 48 for me. I wouldn't say full. I'm choked down to the golf pride on my grip. So it just seems to go 125. So I put the first one close, second one a little past, and then this third one. Uh, sh short. Not that great. So I think we are Zach's up two to one. So Zach didn't quite get all of that one. Let me push this one out to the right a little bit, but it's short. And then Connor almost walks right through the video. Had to tell him we're filming it. So then Zach to save a point, third one comes up short so I just tied it up two to two so now we go to 150 this was kind of a funky distance for me because this is right between an eight and a nine iron so I hit a choke down eight that first time and didn't really like it so I went and grabbed a nine and my nine I just couldn't get it there so I went back it was kind of a bad nine so I went back to a choke down eight try to draw it in there it's kind of a trap draw shot but a little deep I usually carry my eight about 160 something 62 so he doesn't have to hit it too close to win first one sucked he wasn't sh sure if he hit the right club second shot it's a bit better 145 with a little bit backspin And then this third one just wasn't good. So we, we both agreed that his second one and my third one were too close to call. So we went up to 175 for one shot each. That's my seven iron, stock seven iron right here. Hit it almost right. It was 172. I think the target was 175 away. So he's got one shot to win it right here. Zach pushed it just a little right. So I came away with the W this time, but as you can tell, there's going to be a lot more of these when we're out on the real course, and I look forward to getting a rematch with Zach. But hope you enjoyed that little segment, and let's get back to the video. Well, guys, thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Knox Stiff. As always, guys, please like, comment, subscribe down below, tell a friend about some of this, challenge a friend to a golf match, and take a video of it. 
record it, do a Facebook Live, do a recap of how it went down. All those details are stuff that people want to know about. Be sure you're doing that and document it all. As always, guys, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.